The first leopard you saw here today was Shadow. She lives ostensibly over here on a preserve called Arethusa, and that's basically her territory that goes all the way up there. Actually, I'm a little bit too far south, and goes up into Juma like that. That's Juma over there, and down like that. That's Shadow, right? Shadow female leopard. That's a cat, everybody. Now, her mother, Karula, the wonderful queen of Juma, who provides the bulk of our leopard viewing, astoundingly not today, that's about her territory there. So she's got a bigger territory. That's Karula, the queen. We'll give her a little crown. And then, of course, we have Tingana, the dominant male leopard, and his territory, we'll call him, we'll give him in green, is about this size. He goes all the way around here, he encompasses another territory down there of another two female leopards and he's back this way. You can't really see the green, but there you get the idea of where we are. That's a hopeless pen. We'll toss that away. Now we'll take the black pen. And Mvula used to live in this area, in the northeast corner. He had a lovely territory there. Now he's got a bit old. He's probably about 13 years old. That territory is no longer his. Tingana, the big male leopard, has taken it over. Now, other females you're likely to see, better introduce you to them now, given that we're seeing leopards around every bush. There's Tundi, who makes her area down here. That's Shadow's sister. She is nine years old. That's Tundi, female, also princess, sister to Shadow, uh, both daughters, of course, to Karula, and one other down here in Cheetah Plains called Inkanieni, who is unrelated. Not surprisingly, they're quite far away. Let's head back to Brent. He's still with Shadow and Sindile. She's on the move again, still searching desperately for that cub. And that cub could be hidden anywhere here. I'm really hoping it survived the visit from his older brother, or her older brother. But it is, it is unlikely. She's zigzagging through these thickets. And remember, we're on a live African safari. And uh, aren't we spoiled on this Saturday? Not one, but three leopards. The most elusive of big cats. Hi Jim, welcome on this live safari. Great to have you on the back of the vehicle with us. Jim is wondering why can't she just smell the cub? Jim, you probably find... Oh, here we go, here we go. We've got both of them again. And she's desperate to keep that young male away from this area where she is now. He's just on the other side of that bush. He's just through there. Okay, you might hear a few other vehicles around us. We are... In, a, in an area where there are safari lodges that take people from all over the world in safari and we all share these sightings and look at that he's on top of the termite mound taking a bit of high ground mom's still not happy can hear her growling sorry jim uh, so the cub's probably been around here so it'll be lots of its scent and how leopards normally communicate when they get into an area, she'll do those calls and then, oh, they're getting louder. And those calls normally would make the cub run out to come greet her. But the cub might have been chased or even killed by that young male. That's why it hasn't appeared yet. See, now she's definitely putting her body between him and this area we, where we're sitting at the moment. Did he lie down on top of the termite mound? I can't see anymore. Right in the sun. So, believe it or not, that massive thing there is made by termites. They are farmers. They grow fungus under the ground in those massive mounds. Oh, there he is. Look there, there, there he is. 
just see his ears silhouetted against the skyline there. Shame, he must be so confused. Now, just a quick recap on, on why he's got that satellite collar on him and what's going on now. So, when he was just over a year old, he unfortunately caught a domestic dog that came in from the nearby villages and that domestic dog tested positive for rabies. Now, rabies is of course a really incredibly dangerous disease and it can affect all the wild animals out here. So he was darted, put into quarantine and put on a, on a, a bunch of medication and he was in quarantine for seven months and he was then released back here. He went wandering many kilometers before coming back into his natal home range. His natal home range is his mom's territory. And in the time he's been gone, his mom has had another set of babies. Look at that, you can see how great and leopard's camouflage is there. Now, if he came across those babies, he would kill them. It is it, an instinctive response. But he keeps calling to his mom because he would expect her to still react to him. This ties in wonderfully with Heidi. Heidi is asking, at what age do young male leopards leave their mothers? Heidi, it's very dependent. It's normally at about two, and a half, two to two and a half years old. So he would normally be leaving her at about this age. Sometimes they can leave at as young as a year. But that's really, really unusual. But normally two to two and a half years. And so... Theoretically, he could still be hanging with his mum. And there is some discrepancy about who his dad could be. It's very difficult. His female leopards uh, mate with lots of different males. But speaking of male leopards, and definitely a leopard who could definitely possibly be his father. Let's go see that magnificent boy with Jamie. And back to our amazing male leopard. Just a quick reminder that my name is Jamie. And if you needed a reminder that we are live, well, I think that my astonishment that as, as to what has just transpired may well just serve that exact purpose. Now, this is most definitely Mvula, our much-beloved male leopard, a leopard that stole the hearts and the minds of viewers of the Safari Live journey for many, many years. And to see him now is such an incredible privilege because he's become, as I said, completely nomadic. So to see him back in his old territory, in his old haunt, and looking good, I have to say. A little bit thin, a little bit hungry, but no more so than any leopard gets every now and again. Clearly hungry enough that he wanted to scavenge. Oh, I just have to say a very warm welcome to Hale, who is joining us on this action-packed live safari. Hale wants to know why male leopards prefer solitude. Well, funny enough, Hale, it's not just male leopards. It's actually all leopards. The only exceptions to that rule is when a leopardess has cubs, as with what you're seeing with Cindile Shadow and her very small cub, although I have to tell you that that situation is completely unusual in what is un sort of happening there, obviously, as you've worked out from the storyline of that. The only other time that you'll see leopards in the company of other leopards is usually when they're mating. Now the way that leopard territories work is that the, the females have small slightly smaller territories than the male and the male's territory overlaps all of those so it kind of encompasses several different female territories. So what that means is every now and again a male leopard like Mvula might encounter females but generally when you see the leopards encounter each other they kind of, even when they're mating to be completely honest, even when they're, they're forced into each other's company by biology they seem a little bit disgruntled with the situation, like they cannot believe that they've been forced together. Leopards just prefer solitude. They like it to be subtle and they like it to be hidden. I'm going to keep whispering because he is actually nice and close to the vehicle, which is absolutely magical. While he hides out in what is known as a black monkey orange thicket, this dense vegetation, Steph has found another favorite resting place of some of our leopard characters. I 
cannot believe how lucky you have been with all the leopards falling out from everywhere. Finally, you've come to for me to come to the part of the show where I can say hello to you. I'm Stefan Winterbull, and this is the bushwalk part of Safari Live. We're on foot. We're in the middle of the same bush that you've been driving around in with Brent and Jamie. Got no, nothing else around us except for the bush and this massive termite mound that you see me on. It's just, it's really quite high. We were chased up here by some buffalo. The buffalo have since moved on, but we've still stayed up here. But I must be honest with you that because we came to this termite mound, because the buffalo are in the area and herded us sort of onto this high point, we found the most amazing thing. I have been looking for one of these literally for the entire 20 years of my guiding career. It was uncovered by an ant bear and it's right inside this hole. Come and have a look at it. There it is right there. And although it doesn't look like much, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig it out with my stick so that we can see a little bit more of it. There we go. That is a pottery jar. And termite mounds like this were used by the first African people to inhabit this area as a bank. They would store their valuables in a clay pot like this, dig open the termite mound, put their valuables in the pot in the termite mound, and the termites would actually cover this up. And only they would know exactly where that is. And this, we're so lucky, this has been uncovered by an ant bear and allowed us to see inside here. Now to give you some reference as to how exciting this is for me, this pot predates the stores or the supply stores that came into this area. Supply stores came into this area in about 1840 to about 1820. So this would be before that. And I have a piece of pottery that is on top of the shelf in James's tent that just dated it 800 years. Can you imagine this? We've just uncovered an ancient bank vault that could be 800 years old. How awesome is that? I'm actually seeing if I can wet it a little bit so that we can show you a little bit more of what's in it. While I'm doing that to you, I'm actually listening to the buffalo that are behind us. Can you believe it? Still coming through the bush. We've got to be so careful out here. It's actually too easy to get my head stuck onto a... There we go. It's uncovered. This pot you can see has even been scratched a little bit in a pattern. That to me is just so awesome. An 800 year old bank vault inside this termite mound, middle of the African bush. How awesome is that? But we're going to move back to those leopards. They're way too exciting for, for, to be gone from them for a little bit longer. You're going over to Jamie. This day just keeps getting better. <laughs> the leopards being wildlife and us filming live wildlife. Oh, Mvula, you're about to fall out of the tree, boy. And true to Cat and his particularly leopard form, he's decided to escape the circling hyenas by making his way up the only tree that he saw as a viable option. Unfortunately for him, it's not really what I would call the most comfortable of options. Look at him, peering across to where the hyenas were last. <laughs> he looks like he might fall out of the tree. Now leopards are incomparably graceful, incredibly well coordinated and phenomenally powerful cats. But they fall down. They most definitely do fall down just like your pet cats do at home every now and again when they roll over, misjudge and then fall over and get embarrassed. And hello to Max. Max, welcome on this incredible safari. Max, I hope you've got your safari hat and your binoculars ready. Our Max is five years old and would like to know how leopards are different from cheetah. Well, Max, the biggest difference is actually if Mvula would be so kind as to turn his head. Yes, thank you boy. If you have a look at his face, Max, see how he's just got spots around his face, around his cheek? Now a cheetah has a black stripe all the way from the corner of his eye right down to the corner of its mouth. Now cheetah are long and skinny and built for speed 
A leopard is slightly shorter, but much, much bulkier and stronger, kind of like a weightlifter in terms of their build. And leopards really are the most phenomenal weightlifters. A male leopard of Mvula's size, he probably weighs in close to at least 170 pounds. And male leopards have been recorded basically dragging 120% of their body weight or their body mass up into trees. Just picture doing that. Imagine something your body weight. Now imagine pulling it up a tree with only your fingernails and your teeth. And that is how strong a leopard really is. Hello, boy. Mvula, I have to tell you, has the most incredible eyes. Okay, he's coming right up to the vehicle, so we're going to be nice and quiet. He's going to walk right behind Brian. That is absolute magic right next to the vehicle. He almost could have rubbed his cheek on it as he went past and it just goes to show you how comfortable our magical animals are with the vehicle and how little impact we have on their day-to-day -day lives. Where are you going, Vula? What's your plan next? <laughs> I don't believe this, he's chasing the hyena. Sorry everybody, hold on tight. Where's he going? What is he going to do next? This is just too incredible for words. Sorry, we got to change position. Might get a bit noisy. This is a very, very difficult block to drive through, but we're going to do it. Now, just to let you know, in terms of the trees that we are driving over, we pick the ones specifically, and we are trained to do so. Let me just let this hyena come past. I don't want to scare it or impact it in any way. All right. Now, we do pick the trees that we know 